It's a goddamn children's game. Played by a killer. We saw Hangman, so you know what that means. Now it's time for How Did This Get Made? We're gonna have a good time, celebrate some failure, not just be a hater. Did you know you won that? How Did This Get Made? Let's wallow in the mediocrity of some bar art. Perhaps we'll find the answer to the question, How Did This Get Made? Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? I'm your host, Tall John Shear, and this is the podcast where we talk about movies that are so bad they are actually great better than great they are fantastic and this is no exception the 2017 film hangman starring al pacino the ninth time he has played a cop it's the lowest ranking cop movie of his on rotten tomatoes with um below 40 percent the movie is simple there is a serial killer out there who is killing people and also leaving clues to a game of hangman but who is it doesn't make a difference it won't be something you can figure out here to break down the movie are my two co-hosts uh jason manzoukas and june diane rayfield how are you both i'll be honest paul yeah getting getting it took you almost as long as it took me to get through this movie to get through the intro for this movie <laughs> i'm sure it will be edited perfectly but this this movie was as impenetrable as it was to summarize for you. I mean, this is an odd movie because I haven't found myself laughing out loud <laughs> as much in a movie that we've watched for this show than this film. But at the same time, when you get to the last 40 minutes, you're like, what? Like, yeah. wh wh I invested all of this for this? It's... It's so wild, but I mean, I did enjoy, I, the first hour, <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, you're like going to McDonald's. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. June, this are you is... okay? <laughs> you know, I. Here's what I'll say. I want to start with the positive, actually, because there is a lot I really did, like, much like Paul. I mean, we were laughing. We were truly having some LOLs. And I, 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 I've never heard of this. When did this movie come out? I, I don't know. This is and one of those movies that doesn't exist. This, I feel like, right. is the kind of movie that they make for foreign sales no, explicitly. This is 100%. AI. This is, you know, this is, un when you say it's impenetrable, it's exactly right. This movie is unknowable and you yes. can't, it's, it, it doesn't ever happen. It doesn't, it's not a movie. It it's doesn't not stick a podcast. with you at all. It doesn't it's not... stay. The actors are not there in it. it the but the camera work here. is not, it's just not, it's not, a, it's not. It's not a real movie. <laughs> it's not a real movie. If you told me, like June said, like AI, it was assembled and cobbled together from the pieces of other movies, it would make sense why it doesn't add up. Because... Can I say one thing? Can I say one thing? Sure. So there's a, is there a lot that happens in this movie? Who knows? But we'll get into all of it. But one of the things that I was so confounded by was the way this movie was shot because there are multiple moments where important <laughs> action is happening. And I mean, like someone's getting, you know, we're revealing the killer or someone's um, stabbed or someone got away and I simply couldn't see. They didn't yeah. ever show. So dark. It's so dark. And I kept on rewinding. Me too. I did the exact. I kept rewinding to see, did they just reveal something I'm supposed to pick up on? Because the every reaction time, shots, they're cutting to reaction shots. But I can't see yeah. like, what we are all, everybody else has seen. You can't see it. And even if you did, it wouldn't make sense because we didn't know that information beforehand. It's not like a twist. Yes, if they had shown us right. anything, there it's there it's the movie is trying to create suspense, trying to create all these things that it is not itself um bringing about. So by <laughs> by by teasing you, by you know, like the reality is correct me if I'm wrong. But when we see who the killer is, yeah. Yeah. It's not anybody we've ever met in the past, correct? Nope, nor is it anyone that has been referenced. But Paul, we did meet that person in the first scene. No, we met 
somebody Wait. else. The Wait. person getting out of that truck was not him, was yes, it? Yes, it was. Yes, oh, that's the it was? only connection, though. That's the only connection, okay. though. And we don't know anything about him that helps. But I mean, like, we haven't seen... He's not one of the cops. He's not one of the... By the way, I would have been okay with that. So that man who sideswipes Al Pacino in the beginning, that's him. And he did it that's on the purpose. Killer. That's but, the killer. And that's what we find that out because he was in jail for nine months, I well, guess, but, for that sideswipe, which seems like a pretty heavy sentence. Was the goal to just... Drive that day and sideswipe Al Pacino while he sits outside of a bar <laughs> so that this whole plan can be set in motion. Because here's the other thing that occurred to me at the end of the movie. If you're going to set up a movie wherein the, the game of hangman is like the serial killer's calling card, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's like... Then we've got a hangman murderer. We've got like the press would be on this. We've got like a whole thing. And the whole ethos of it would be trying to figure out what's the word. Yes. Right? They and never try. They never engage in trying to solve the puzzle. Not only that, but you would think that we have to solve the crime before he solves the puzzle. Before right. rather all the letters are revealed. And in fact, they don't. The guy wins. The serial killer wins because by the time all the letters are filled in, he's killed everybody. Okay, and but for someone, I just have you guys, I'll have you both know, and then Paul, I want to hear what you're going to say. But for someone like me, a winner of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Oh my gosh. Go. <laughs> I'm also a winner of Celebrity Wheel of Did Fortune. Did you win $160,000? I didn't win that much. No. I didn't think so. So um, as a winner of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, $160,000 for a wonderful organization called Oceana, um, they protect and restore the world's oceans. I won about $80,000, so, okay. So I guess I won double. <laughs> so as a winner, I, once I realized, hang man, we get to figure out a, a word puzzle, I'm ready. I am right. ready. Give me a couple letters. If I'm on the Monroe Police Force, I'm calling in Vanna White. I'm calling in June Diane Rafael. I'm hope calling I get a in, call. in hangman experts. Yes. Hangman experts. It's not even a long phrase. It's one word. And also, there's no attempt. So they start figuring out these clues, but it's like at a certain point, like just throw some words on the table. Wait, wait, but June, we meet Al Pacino or we meet him a year later, in a car, doing crosswords in, in Latin. Latin. Which, by the way, makes no fucking Where do you sense. Get because those? So is the are the questions in Latin? He no, can't be I filling think... in the answers. He can't be translating. Well, well that then that was my whole. Well, that was my whole thought. It's, it's like it clearly oh. not because he's getting like a consumer crossword. It looks like a book that you would buy at the airport. That's what he's doing. And he's like, oh, you're doing it in Latin. He's like, I'm always an altar boy. But you could, it wouldn't work. <laughs> but yet they go so far to get you to, not only is he good at crosswords, but he does them in Latin. And then this whole movie is a crossword in Latin. And he only figures it out here at the end. Every letter is present, but the last one. Um, I... I'm the I. I. I, was, I'm, I was the I. <laughs> I was the I. Here's but the here's thing. my problem with that. They're bad cops. He knew it. He already drew yeah. the line of the eviction. But he didn't. This is my problem with the serial killer. Aside from, obviously, what the fact that he's killing people. But he doesn't have... Al Pacino did not evict him as a child. Yes, he did. Wait, what? That was the flashback. He no. Wait, Al what was the? What's the Latin word mean? Eviction. Mean, eviction. It's just eviction. It's just okay. eviction. But Al Pacino is just a cop. I thought he was just a cop who found he evicted him. Yeah, listen, listen to this clip. I remember the last time I saw you. You were just up to here, just a little boy, about five or six years old. I was a cop. I was doing my job. You got you. When that day was over, I washed my hands in <laughs> I did. I know I did. And I know now that was a mistake. It was a tragic mistake. Jimmy, I remember those little eyes looking at me as if I was the one who killed your father. But I didn't. I didn't do it. He hung himself. I was there, Jimmy. I was there witnessing that trauma. You know what? Fuck you! 
Paul, this clip didn't explain it, my well, friend. Well, if you listen on, he was he was I more listened upset. to this clip. He was upset that he didn't take care of him in like the home for wayward children. But yes. that's but, he, but that as, doesn't make him an eviction. It doesn't make him eviction he, man. Yeah, that, he, that's the so he he's did kill, evict him. Okay, he's gonna kill so you, nine people so he can spell out eviction. Well, man? who do you who do you get more upset with, the repo man or the company like Allstate who's repossessing your car? The repo man. You don't get mad at Allstate. Allstate, but a, he wasn't faceless, evicting them. He, he was. He was the cop. repo man. What he, he was? was. A, he just found the body though. He so you're saying, doing wait, my no, job. What Paul is saying, Jason, is that Al Pacino, young Al Pacino, shows up to evict them and happens oh, to I find the body, which is not, I, I do not think is the case. Don't, no. don't, don't, worked police put, don't police put eviction notices on doors? Landlords do. I well, don't think, pa- wait, Paul, okay. are you saying <laughs> that Pacino is there in an official police pr- duty to evict saying, them? Jason, yes. That's what he's saying. Oh, so that's why, okay, if that is the case. It is not. It's not in the movie, I don't think. Now, that's a leap. Okay, so here we go. That's a leap that I'm saying. Only law enforcement officers can evict a tenant after they have a court order. So, oh boy. The, yes, you are. It's yes maybe and that no. Is, maybe it's, that is what they're going for, but it's it's really not like so, explicitly laid out that way in the movie. Mostly I mean, because technically, we the don't landlord know is any responsible. Of this story. We don't know no. any of this story of the boy and a the majority hung of this movie happens way before There's, we check in. The whodunit of this movie is so unsatisfying. Oh, God. Because when it is finally revealed, and we don't know who this person is, and when his motivations are revealed, we don't understand, nor have we been privy to those. So it's unsatisfying in every thriller, every mystery, way. Well, let me go, way. Let me go back to the first question I wrote down when I watched this movie. And I want to ask this, and not, it's going to come across snarky, but I, I want you to both listen to it in a way that I meant it. Does Al Pacino need the money or does he actually like this part? Because I want to get to the bottom of that. Like Al Pacino doesn't seem to need the money. So he must have read this and felt, yeah, this is for me. I disagree a little only because, not that I disagree, but I I think because this Al Pacino, I think, does two of these a year. Okay, like this this is like John Malkovich is doing this. Bruce Willis until his retirement was doing this. There's a lot of actors who are in movies that are that are like this, that are like Mm. police procedural that are direct to foreign markets. Mostly Ah. they sell big because these names, these people are names. They sell big foreign And so they can get paychecks for very little work. You know, this movie costs nothing. I mean, he is on screen a lot. And I will say that he's not sleepwalking through it, right? Oh, no, he's making choices. A lot of choices. Sometimes he looks sleepy. I do have my second question was, when did Al Pacino become Southern? I know we just accept it now, but this is... First of all, where is Monroe? Where is Monroe? It's like, yes. Nolens? I have no idea. It looks like a big city. And I wrote, where is he? And, but then they're talking like, you retired from the FBI to go back to your hometown. Monroe, where? And yes, for sure, Pacino sounds like he's in the bayou. So Pacino so sounds crazy. like he's in a Looney Tunes cartoon. He sounds yeah. like Foghorn, Foghorn Leghorn. Leghorn. We should put yes. them together. Who like, oh, now? Let me tell you, when I go over here, I tell you, FDA don't put that stuff in that man. I'm like, it, what I is going on? I couldn't make heads or tails of his accent <laughs> at all. He's giving him and it his came full and Pacino hua hua <laughs> all that stuff. Except it's definitely got a Bayou lilt to it. I I think that Pacino was like, I like this script. Will you let me do it if I can wear my own scarves? And they were like, Yeah, you can wear scarves. And he was like, Great. Like it did feel like he was dressed. Like he didn't go through wardrobe. He's like, I'll just wear what I'm wearing. Yeah, like yeah. that's because he does like Pacino now is an interesting character. I watched him like do a cooking segment with uh, with the guy who has donkey sauce. Well, it was a guy Fieri. Like he's like, oh, I love you. Oh, guy. wow. Yeah. So he's like Pacino's getting out there. I guess what my question is, though, it's just a money gig, but it does look like he's not 
doing the money gigs the way other people are doing the money gigs. Like he is on set, looks like night shoots because every place oh, yeah. they enter is completely dark. There's never dark a light on and anywhere. Empty. There's they don't have flashlights. They're police officers who enter pig factories, private homes in the middle of the night with no flashlights. Why? They are bad at their jobs. Every step of the way, they are behind. The person who breaks the most clues is Brittany Snow, who is an investigative we'll reporter that. who is given unprecedented access to murder scenes and 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 cases and everything for reasons that I don't know. You're so right that she's she's given this unprecedented access. But I said to Paul, I was like, I understand when people when reporters go on a ride along, and I get okay, the the cops want a new, you know, um, they want this profile to kind of like soften their image or whatever. What however she convinced Captain to the mayor. let her in, but or okay, the mayor to do this. But I'm like, that's. R- Having ride-along status is one thing. I have never heard of a reporter walking into an active crime scene. Taking pictures. <laughs> taking <laughs> pictures, pictures. Taking cell phone pictures. Not putting on gloves. Not putting on booties. No. And I'm like, this is... They'll never be able to try a case. Had the serial killer survived, I believe he would have gotten off. Because of with course. like any sort of decent defense attorney they're going to be like why was this random civilian walking around these crime scenes yeah absolutely i I also want to know about her reporting style because she seems to report or record a lot on her iphone but doing it at one question at a time like she's in a ride-along you see her take out her phone hit record and go tell me what about this he answers she hits stop and puts it away one question at a time (laughs) interview like <laughs> i i find i find that to be a very uh and he's like sure she says can i record you now sure and put, like on camera and he's like yeah sure okay <laughs> like what no Wait, and and he's behind his desk by the way that police uh station looked like a a, a high class architectural office it's like it that yeah, was it's like a that, loft it was like a downtown loft my favorite detail about that police station oh this is was... my favorite part there's one shot where behind Brittany Snow, as she's looking around the office, there are not one, but two pictures of a sunset. Same picture. Yes. And then, Paul, you saw this, so pointed what? out to you. Jason, did you see this? No. Then you sort of move from Brittany to him. Or I think you see those sunsets when she's looking around and f- happens to find the file about his wife. Ugh. But then when that scene where he's talking to Brittany Snow for the first time, Behind him is the same picture of a sunset. The, that postcard. To the wall. I thought it was a postcards. It's not. But a you're postcard. right. It's, it's, it's a photograph. Sunsets and it's what? a photograph. It's, you will see the sunsets in every picture. Maybe it's it, maybe it's metaphoric. Like this is the sunset of Al Pacino's career, not as an actor, <laughs> but his uh, his cop career. I don't know, but also Boy. when you just talked about her getting that file, she pulls out that file, which is like right on top. Like as if Carl Urban every day is like, all right, let me go back to looking first at pictures first. of my wife, <laughs> my dead wife, my murdered dead wife. She looks at that for no more than seven and a half seconds and solves the case. She's like, oh, yeah, a hangman. She <laughs> is she is such a better um, police officer in terms of she's getting clues, figuring stuff out, putting right. connections together in a way that they are a failure uh, Carl Urban and Al Pacino. The number of times Al Pacino like hits himself and is like, "Oh, I should have known. Ah, I should have known. Ah, ho, ho, I should have known. Oh no, that's the one that put Chief in the hospital. In the drunk driver that put Chief in the hospital. <laughs> he's like, he's celebrating. Oh, my favorite line was when he says, uh, "You know how many people I told their loved ones died gruesomely." <laughs> <laughs> like a crazy line to say like it like like don't worry about that i got that under control i'll tell anyone how their loved one was murdered <laughs> but it's like, like so here's what i think i think they were going for and i wonder if this was an al pacino pass on the script because i what i think the story might have been was that he's such a um kind of detached and inhumane cop and so not attached to the work, so not attached to what 
you know, the sort of humanity, like the humanity the of it. police yeah. work and the situations he's in and the victims that that moment really should land at the end where he realizes like eviction, like this guy, I didn't check in on him. I didn't care. Just Although, doing my job. Right. But, but we know because we've watched him like this woman, you know, urban's wife was going to wanted him to walk her down the aisle. Like we see him as a quite caring man. So it doesn't make a lick of sense. This is the arc of the character that he learned to care. But I would argue that he cares so much that he seems to be doing police work in the beginning, surveilling the bar, right? Like he's we, I watching- couldn't, the donut shop. I couldn't figure out, but, but I couldn't figure out, am I supposed to be watching Pacino's movie, Carl Urban's movie? Like, who Ray is the, who's the story of this? Is this a story about The medical Pacino examiner. Got, oh, oh my God, the medical, the medical examiner, examiner should be fired. <laughs> They, the medical examiner should be fired. She's I, having watched so much Law and Order. <laughs> she doesn't know anything. What time do you think the the died? I don't know. I I I don't know. <laughs> what? How about this? Where they literally take a watch and they go dust that for prints. Yeah. No, that's not her job. <laughs> nor would the watch have made it this far. Like they would Everybody, bring a cadaver yeah. in there. They wouldn't bring like <laughs> wouldn't just be like. And uh, look around here and see what you got. Like, she's always given her opinion. They died by hanging. I deeply (laughs) appreciated that actress because she was giving us a lot. And I, there, okay, so there's two performances that I want to call out. She was absolutely spectacular. Harried. Harried. She was excited. She was nervous. It felt like I've never, I've never seen someone's energy bubbling up on screen like that where she was just. And she's doing an autopsy. Autopsy. It was full on comedy. I, I mean, I, I don't was, know. I mean, it's it's go crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I, 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 she's I mean, like, I, I, the bones seem to be broken before before. So she's been in the hospital a couple times. Like she was so struck by her own work, which I would imagine at a certain point you become a little detached from. But she was so thrown by every I piece like, of it, which would which would almost make you think like, oh. Is this a small town? They've never seen anything but like this. But I don't this. think that's the case. No, I no, agree. It's not town. the case. They're in a big it's town. It's more like so, Gotham. But she's, she's acting as though I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. I'm like out of my element. Oh, Whereas God, what they're so coming good. to her for, and she's hugging Pacino. Oh my God, I missed you. You're supposed to be fishing, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what do we got? And this should be old school rat-a-tat-tat. Let me drill it down for yeah. you. Here's the info. This should be an exposition dump. And basically every question they have for her, the expert, she's like, I don't know. I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to take some time. I'm like, as good as mine. Meanwhile, there's a random reporter standing in the room too. I'm like, yeah. isn't this a sterile environment? I also oh. think, by the way, just to go back to that Al Pacino hugging her, like clearly Pacino's been retired for a little bit because I think... You tell me, when he got his car sideswiped, he was kind of in the same spot doing the crosswords. So was he retired at that point? I think so, right? Yeah. Maybe about oh, a year? Oh, no, he wasn't. Oh, no. He, he, was, oh, he was active. Okay. Because he, so, he was on the radio. He was listening okay. to the radio. Yeah. Okay. So I love that, like, just to go to what June's saying, like, a cop who doesn't care, he hugs everyone in that precinct. Again, like, the captain so loves him. Like, and I think that that's Pacino as Al Pacino, like... Come here. He's Let me give everybody's got to love it. Uh, gotta, everybody's got to love me. Hey, can you I want tell a Dunkachino? There's another performance in this in this picture that is remarkable. <laughs> it, it is absolutely outstanding, and I really oh want, yes, I please really want to. I know you're gonna say. Um, call out the the actor who plays the priest. Oh yeah. Who has to describe and and I I I almost want to watch the scene again because it was so well done. <laughs> First of all, moment he's on screen, I was just taken with him. Like I was like, oh, yep. everybody else is acting, and this man is just existing. Sure. And I just thought he was so fucking good. But he is has to tell a tale about how someone took his blood in the middle of the night in a vial. Okay, this is the former criminal turn priest that they're talking to you don't know her no well you can have to do some explaining then because your blood was in her apartment my blood in her i don't i don't have it i'm not gonna believe this 
I, frankly, I, I, I still don't understand it myself. But um, a couple of months ago, I, I woke up in the middle of the night, someone standing over me, a man. And he, I, I struggled, but he, he, he put something over, over my face, and eventually I passed out. When I woke up, There, there was blood coming out of my arm. I mean, it was dripping down my arm. Like I'd gotten a shot or something. So, okay, so you're telling us that a guy broke into your house and stole your blood? That's the story that's, you're telling? That's, I told you, I told you you wouldn't believe me. This rings a bell to me. Yeah, it's a kind of a coincidence when you think of it. Last Thursday, I don't know if I told you. I woke up in the middle of the night and for some reason, I had a pink tutu on. I'm a serious fuzzy feather sticking out of my ass. Real talk. I have a real question here. Sure. What? What? Why did the killer take his blood? And why wasn't that ever woven into Can the we... rest of the? Why isn't that? I'm. Not, I'm like a real question here. The, the motives of the killer oh, make no sense. Question. So well, he stole the blood from a priest a little months bit of ago. It, a little bit of it. Because he's months he's ago, so he could spread him it around. A, <laughs> he's so he could spread him it. around. Yes. And but, the priest is like, you're going to like this. This is actually pretty funny. <laughs> when he, the right. priest's delivery of this information, they're like, how could how do we find your blood? And he's like, okay, you're not going to believe this, but, but I, I woke up in the middle it. of the night. I but too. I did believe it. He tells I believe that story it too, and I was but like, oh, should wow, I do believe you, Breeze. Like, and, I am. Uh, why? But they're not curious as to, they don't even put that up as part right, of Jason. the killer's like MO. MO. Because if you're a serial killer, I imagine that you actually do want credit for your work. Yes. This is not seven. Seven, right. I get it. I get it. Zodiac, I get it. Like, this is just, this, I feel like, June, your statement earlier in the podcast that this feels as though it was done by AI is absolutely right. Because I feel like it's pulled a lot of the aesthetic choices from other things, but none of the um, story elements. So the story right. doesn't add up at all, but all of the... Um, the uh, all the stuff there, that's yeah. been yes, all right. the trappings, all the tropes are there. Because here's the thing: if you take a step back, you have a cop who has a murdered wife who is killed in a grisly way. You have people being killed in a grisly way, being a part of a game of hangman. You have a reporter who also had a run-in with a criminal where the police saved her, and she has a permanent scar. Like these people are getting scarred because they're getting the letters written on their body. Then you have a police mm -hmm. officer who is retired but we don't really he seems great it doesn't seem like is he this was this all is the whole is the serial killers and forgive me i know we're spending all of this just really trying to parse the plot what else can, is the what serial else can we do kill, exactly is the serial killers motivation just to get back at pacino aka eviction man <laughs> Well, I wish this by movie the way, that's called the twist, Man. isn't it? That I think. And as two. a result, Carl Urban and Britney Snow are innocent bystanders, right? No, no because Carl no, Urban's no, no, wife no. was the first victim. She's victim number or, one. And but, but was is that it because from a different Pacino person? loved her? Is that because Pacino no. loved no, that woman? I think what happened was the first person who was killed, Carl Urban's wife, was killed by that man where they go to his house and he's already killed himself. And then this guy picked up the torch. Whoa. Could that, could that be part of it? Huh? Because Whoa. Carl Urban's wife was killed. He didn't yeah. finish the job. I think that he's think copying. He's a copycat? Oh. I think he is, right? I thought that that was part of the twist. Was that because no, they find I that think guy? there is a twist, but the, the, I, I do agree with you that there's two killers out there whoa there's definitely two because there's our killer who was the the little boy and is now you know current day serial killer yes however i do and he he was the one who did the v um on carl urban's but i believe that we might pan out in that scene that little boy scene to find that he has a twin whoa wait when are we going to do that? In the sequel. When? <laughs> the sequel when? is when. When? What? 
I well, the think, sequel is the sequel is happening. I mean, that's what I'm saying because we don't get to know we there. Wordle. There is another. There is another <laughs> hangman, and he is clearly now. I think what might have happened is his what the sequel will be Ooh, right. is that that boy was adopted by a wealthy couple and like went on to this like has a really right. prestigious there has to be job. another person. This is an, a nature nurture scenario. Yeah, definitely. All right, so oh, all right, wow. so I guess what we're saying is this. If we were to take the plot at face value, what we saw on the screen, what we were to understand <laughs> That's hard. That's okay. going to be hard. If if we were to take what we what the material on the screen and the words said dictated, <laughs> Al Pacino was a part of the eviction of this young boy because his father didn't pay the rent, the father killed himself. And then the young boy was mad that Al Pacino never checked in on him. So Al, Which the is first such a crazy thing to be mad at. I know. Yeah. And the first that's not worth holding on to and killing nine people as a result. No, or however well, many. Why, well, the uh, first, and I want to hear the rest of this, Paul. But why would a child, if a yeah, police expect officer, the cop. expect a cop to take care of? Them? And maybe, and I'll give you maybe a five year old in grief and 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 mental duress makes a logical leap that doesn't make sense. But sure. why as an adult well, why can he you... not look at the situation and be like, oh, that police officer was not the person who did this? You well, know what here, I mean? Here's what I'll say that maybe answers this. I think you talked earlier about Al Pacino doing a pass on the script. Yeah. I think Al Pacino might have toned down his character because what would make this all make sense is simply this. He uh, goes to the boy. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. I'll look at like he needed to s- promise him. You know what? I, I know your dad's not here, but I'll be here for you forever. You know, I like say, I, say, I, say, I, say, I say, I say, I say, I say, is that is that your daddy up there? <laughs> He's like a full blown Southern like gentleman. By the way, just so we know, Monroe, Georgia is where it takes place. Oh, interesting. Wait, okay. what? Monroe, Georgia. Is so wait, Carl place? Urban is from the South as well? Everybody yeah. in this movie is from the South. Well, yeah, because it's Britney Spears' hometown. Uh, sorry, it's Britney Murphy. <laughs> ah, Britney Snow's hometown. Wow. Uh, Spears, wow. Murphy. <laughs> Spears, Murphy, Snow? <laughs> That's your uh, ranking of Britney's? <laughs> um, um, okay. By the way, population of Monroe, right. Georgia, 15... 15 people? 15 people. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense for why a lot of these scenes were so empty. I was like... How Wait, does can I nobody tell you work what I... at the pig factory? Can... Go ahead. <laughs> okay, my favorite, my favorite, one of my favorite moments, again, I had some little laughs, is after we're in that church and Al Pacino gets knocked over, although, again, I had to rewind that scene because I didn't see the impact yep. of him being knocked totally. over. So I was like, what yep. just happened? Well, it's also shot so bizarrely so in order to cover true. the I stunt double. I could not for the life of me figure out the geography of what the fuck I was watching. Yep. So yep. I... But he gets knocked over by a man who's hanging from a, maybe a crucifix oh. or the ceiling, and there's a pig head on that man, and then, and then he gets knocked over, and then later on, an autopsy is being done by our favorite medical examiner, who's just as flummoxed. The thing that I love so much is that there's the body, and then just to the side, there's a table with the pig head on it. Yeah. Wait, by I'm the way, like, I. I- and then Pacino's like, you know what? All these pig heads have an ID number. That, I know, I know which, that. By the way, which by He's the like, way doesn't I say, make, I say, I, I say, I say. When I grew up in the barnyard, I knew. Now but listen now, the way, to me. Listen to here. I'm gonna also Ooh. say that the FDA is not getting up in meat. That would be the USDA, right? FDA is more like packaged foods. Who like knows? the like when I you get know. meat at like, a store, again, it's like, I wouldn't be surprised if Chad GPT wrote this. <laughs> All right, but can we go back to the pig head scene? Because yes. this is, I don't want to skip over my favorite part, which is Al Pacino goes down. Oh, my back. <laughs> which and again, you every, don't even really see. And everyone stops. Like they let the bad guy get away. It's yes. not like, because in a movie it would be like, <laughs> and this is the AI of it all. He'd be shot and they'd be yeah. like, oh no, we got to put pressure on the wound. He's like, my back. Like yeah. it was his they, back. It's just a little sore. And they and repeatedly they that guy leave. Yeah. They repeatedly are pointing a gun at the murderer and don't shoot. 
multiple times. Multiple times. They have the guy in their sights and they do not shoot that person. And I just don't understand. I don't get it. Like this feels like antithetical to what their whole job well, is. I think Again, it's like they, but by the way, good work on them as police officers. They're not going to just shoot first. That per, they're, they're, they have to get the evidence. They have to figure out the evidence first, you know? Uh, but I did I like guess. when Brittany Snow went, pigs, pigs, cops. Yeah. Cops are pigs. He's taunting you. He's yeah. taunting you. No shit. Did anyone else have trouble when, when, okay, so there's yes, later I on. I did. <laughs> <laughs> later on, there's, there's a, um, the captain is, one of our victims and she we're in her house. We're trying to figure out, we're trying to find the killer. And there's another cop who's in the house um, who's left for dead on in a bathtub. And we realize that our killers walked out in the cop clothes. Be, and I, this was another and rode away on a dirt bike where the reason why we realized yeah. this is because Carl Urban turns around and looks over the toilet bowl and sees like a cop belt there. I this, looked at yeah. that. I don't know if anyone else did. I had to stare at it. I rewound it three times to figure out what am I looking like? At, at points, well, I thought I was looking down a drain or at a, through a window. I was like, what am I? Lo- I can't see what this is. It, none of the clues are clues. They were giving me things that were feeling as though, oh, this is important. But then they weren't giving me things that clearly were important. Like, again, the hangman game. But wait, wait. They never sat in a conference room and said, what might this be? And how might that inform the crime spree that we are? Every 24 hours, yeah. someone is murdered. I'm what, not, And they I'm, only ever are the three of them. You would think the entire city would be shut down. Uh, here's the thing. I also want to bring up, just, just to hit this back for one more second too. When we see evidence, people sometimes don't name it as well. Like when Brittany... Uh, Snow looked at that thing that the woman had on the porch. She's like, "What was that? Guys, what was, she, what was what that? Was, I didn't what know what I was that? looking at. What was in the ashtray, Jason? That? Oh, I do know what that is. What was, what was it? That? It was the same. Okay, so that when they go to that house, it's yeah. to find Joey, the guy who was on a date with the woman who the first victim, right? Right. But what they realize is the woman is Joey, Joey. Okay, yeah, not that. the but man. How and they, they realize, realize that? that because Brittany Snow notices in her ashtray the same dark cigarettes that were in the ashtray at the murdered woman's home. Oh. So that the that okay, that woman so must have been there, not the guy why, inside. Another moment. Why did me. that woman run? She Ferris Bueller's through the she town. She Ferris Bueller's because uh, she doesn't know the woman is dead. But it's again, but why this is she is a running? Lie. Because she got she, scared because she's a for a drug charge, she, for a drug charge yes. or abuse. A, both. Well, both, maybe. And then and then what my favorite thing, this might be my favorite thing in movies, again, with like the AI element. A, a person running mid run from a cop going, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. It's like, <laughs> like I get like once the cuffs are on, but to do it mid run. <laughs> <laughs> to do it mid run, like you'd be like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> and then, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, but, like a, that's like an improv scene. I didn't do anything. Yeah. You're, you are actively running, running away. away. Like, this is, this movie is, I'm going to say, 95% to being a naked gun movie. Like, Agreed. The, you could you could pivot Al Pacino into being Leslie Nielsen right now in the world with minimal effort. Oh like he's gosh. already basically there. You he Al Pacino should start making Leslie Nielsen style Abrams oh Brothers. Oh my spoof gosh. Movies. Yes. Instead of it being Liam Neeson, who I know it is, it right. should be Al Pacino. But which it would, would be, be delightful. <sighs> oh, him just do I mean, we know that he can do it because of Duncacino from the uh, Jack and Jill movie. Like he's he can do comedy. Oh, he can do it. He would kill. And it, it's like because that that's where this movie is. This movie is almost a parody yeah. of a bad Al Pacino cop and, movie. And, and there's so many things said that make no sense throughout that could be funny or jokes. Like, when they're trying to find the janitor in the church, the priest says, oh, he cleans whenever he can. It's it's like it's not like that would be something you would say to somebody who has a hobby. It's not like, oh, yeah, he paints whenever he gets a, a free moment. It's like this guy, like, 
He's a janitor. He loves it. Whenever he gets a chance to clean, at two in the morning, four in the morning, it's going to oh, be yeah. clean. I mean, he's going to. Well, you know, it. it's, it's a church in, in small town Georgia. So we're packed all day. I, I, so he can only clean from two to six a.m. I mean, because we're get just in there. so busy here at the church in Monroe, Georgia. You know, come it, on. It, it, but whatever he can, he, he loves it. He loves it. He loves it so much. Oh, my what God. I don't, but what I don't understand about the serial killer is why he's choosing certain victims. And some and of them are related with, to our people. Some of them aren't. Some of them aren't. And Joey, because Joey does end up getting murdered later on, correct? Why? Yes. And the, why? the reason that Pacino gives okay. is he is punishing us for saving the chief. Because they saved Sarah Shahi. And as a result, that means that he's got to kill someone else now. And so he kills Joey. Their who dear tried friend, to kill Joey? Herself. I mean, they don't know Joey. I know, but jo- that's what's, that's again what's so confusing. I, at the, by the end of the movie, I don't understand the killer's MO at all. In a world that we live in that is so obsessed with true crime and serial killers and documenting and documentaries and podcasts about all this stuff, this is so slapdash. This is so like not compelling casework it, it, that I'm like, I, why do they think we'll just go along with this? None of this is satisfying. None of this is, there's no aha moments. I'm not ahead of the movie well, ever. You can't, None you, of it. They, you, you can't have the killer be someone who is not introduced or even spoken of. Like, again, go back to a scene and have Al Pacino be like, I made some mistakes in my career. Mm-hmm. I let yeah. things fall through the cracks. He never says that. Like, yep. you know, at any point, like we, I think that we're also trying to figure out who murdered Carl Urban's wife. And when Carl Urban is confronted with the most logical explanation, yeah. this is the guy. There's a V on your wife's chest. He's like, no, no, it's not his MO. It's not. It's like, why wouldn't you choose to believe it? It would act, you are looking for, you are You're looking an, for You it. were an FBI agent. You were an FBI agent. Do your casework. Do your due diligence. But this Get is a man who is looking for connections who refuses the connection. Paul, he isn't. He's like, he actively. Okay, so here's another possible twist. And I know I said this to you, Paul, while we were watching it. I said, Urban's the killer. And Paul was like, no. But there's something very Snow. strange to me about the way he's treating his wife's death. Because even later on, when Al Pacino's like, tr- again, trying to sort of reopen the investigation and also reopen it. It's only been a year. Why is this a cold case? Oh, Urban's I don't know like, if it's, a, has it only been a year since his wife was killed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it was nine months when the killer was in jail. Yeah, it's oh, been, got it, it's got been it. a okay. year, but- by the he way, that, remember when Carl t- Urban's on the on the phone with someone? He's like, "I'm just, I guess, I'm just trying to figure out who, where my what happened to my wife," and hangs up frustrated. So Carl Urban is clearly some. Who's I, he talking? I, I to? don't know. But then when when w- why isn't Pacino that brings part it of the back story? Up, he's like, "Oh, what do you want to put a whole team on it? You want to put yeah. a team on it? It's like, well, what? Why not? Which way do you want it, man? <laughs> which way do you want it? Do you want to figure this out, or do you want it to go away? His wife was killed." In a ritualistic, brutal murder. It wasn't like a hit and run. Like, I think what, you, what you're what you led to believe in the beginning was it was like a hit and run. It was like a accident. But then when you reveal how she was killed, literally, like, slashed up in their home, you would be like, yeah, I think we should maybe go a little also, deeper on this one. But also, remember when he's talking about his wife's murder He says, you know, Pacino asked him what happened. And he said, you know, she called me up and she said to come over that we should try and work things out. So they were like broken up or separated or whatever. He he was too involved in his job. And it it very much seemed to me like the murder was going to be very wrapped up in Carl Urban's character and somehow related to that storyline. And it was just coincidence. Well, Seems to be. No, no, no. I know. Here's what I think. Back to my theory of if we just take what is written. Al Pacino abandons a boy. The boy grows up. He's like, I want to take out. Crazy to say I wanna, abandoned I, when he didn't have any responsibility. Well, let me just let, okay, well, go, let's go, just let's just go into no, the idea. I'm sorry. June, only in his powers as eviction man. Which, by the way, I got to say, the, the, the true Latin is just eviction. It is not eviction man. The true Latin is just, but I want to, I do want any merch from the show to say 
<laughs> eviction man. Uh, eviction man. Eviction man. Just a shirt that says I, that Scott in said Latin. it means eviction man, and I didn't know that. I thought it meant eviction yeah, man. Yeah, so Scott in the chat said it I, means eviction man, and he's smarter than us, so <laughs> I believe it. All right. He evicts this boy. The boy decides he's going to take uh, revenge on Al Pacino by doing this game of Hangman, which, as Al Pacino says, celebrates his dad's hanging, which I don't think is the right term to celebrate. Uh, recreates might be the better word, but celebrates uh, the dad's hanging. And the first clue was going to be doing that to his partner's wife. And I think that the original plan was to get people all around because the cop, the uh, the head of the police precinct is another person that is attacked. I think it was all going to be people around Al Pacino to, in, to get maximum oh, okay. damage. So the janitor, the janitor was some, wasn't the janitor someone that Al Pacino had also put in yes. jail or something? I think that that I, I'm going to just say yes to that because I don't remember huh. it. But uh, but I will but say yes. that. That was the original plan. I think the original plan was to go and get people all around Al Pacino's life. But because Al Pacino has no real life anymore with any other people that he likes, they have to go to other people. There's not a niece. There's not a cousin. There's not a... I mean, it just all felt so... Yeah. None of it is satisfying. Well, but that's the other... None of it is satisfying at all. I agree, Paul. You might very well be right, but it's not satisfying. None of these people, none of these clues clicking into place give us any th- of the thrills of silence of the lambs give us any of the thrills of because we're never in the mindset of the villain i i totally right? agree i wasn't saying that i was making sense i was saying that i think that oh, that's no, no, the no, idea I know, I know. but i will say that i'm so mad at you paul uh, i'm so <laughs> I will say mad this, at you paul but i guess it's like but, but i can't figure paul, out why is- did you write this movie <laughs> well look i gotta tell you i made a lot of money on it um <laughs> here's the thing you could make it so much more compact and better by having that priest do it. Well, 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 David Green, I thought I put you away years ago. And he's like, well, I'm out. Now I'm a priest. Well, I don't know. I don't believe you now. And I won't believe you. Like you could have just drawn connections so easily. Every person they encountered. This is my favorite toy shop. Go in here all the time. Love looking at manga. You know, it's like whatever. You You know, it's, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because, and what's crazy about it is, The movie is so bad that it tells you immediately, the cold open of the movie is Al Pacino doing a crossword in his car. His car gets sideswiped. He pulls the van over. The guy gets out. We see the skull necklace hanging from the the thing, right? Right. Yeah. We never return to that van, the skull necklace, again until it shows up again in Britney Snow's apartment. And Al Pacino's like, I know who the killer is. It's a guy I pulled over a year ago from the cold open. And that guy has never been in the movie again. And he wasn't and chasing him. Like, that's the other thing. And, like, it felt like he was chasing. Like, no, felt exactly. Like he, that was a it random It felt like we run. were on the case. It felt, it was absolute, absolute random. And I'll say one more thing about that stupid pendant that's hanging the weird nail or whatever. That would be the equivalent of me wearing one of those scented trees around my neck because <laughs> it's hanging on the rear view mirror. It wasn't like, oh, I noticed, I noticed his necklace. Like yeah. it was, he noticed and, it hanging and from the P- rear view mirror. So he's like, ah. And Pacino, this is what's crazy about it. We see it in the cold open in extreme close up on camera shot from the interior right. of the car. But the ins- it insinuates that Pacino sees the skull medallion from 30 feet outside the car. He's at, he's outside the car completely. And he doesn't see that thing. We do. And why would it make a difference? Why would you even clock that as a cop? It's like it's hanging from the I rear view mirror. He must have remembered it from I thought maybe it was on his dad when he was hanging. I believe that they shot that He remembers that, open. that later. They shot he remembers that open. That oh, he does? Oh. It was yeah. on his dad? He does. Oh. It was on oh, his dad. Oh, I didn't yes. even know that. Okay. That, but that again, again, this is where Pacino's bad at his job. He doesn't remember that until even later when he remembers the the father hanging. He first remembers the, the medallion right. hanging, the skull hanging from the rear view mirror. He doesn't put it together that it was also hanging on the hanging father until the next clue dump. That's the thing is, 
exposition and clues are given to them, they don't solve anything. They don't have any satisfying work done for them. The guy, the killer, walks them through it every step of the way. So they're only realizing things the killer wants them to. They're bad policemen. I will say I disagree with you because the best clue is this one. Stiff dead guy hanging in here. Do you think? Yeah, I agree, yes. Now, if his body was wet, would that make him freeze faster? Oh, yes, uh, of course it would. Archer, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking when I want my beer to chill faster, I wrap it in a wet paper towel. He was already wet before he was brought in. There you go. I think this boy wants us to sweep the river. I was like, he does? I didn't get that at all. How? What what does that mean? I didn't even understand the paper towel to the dredging the lake. I didn't understand it. I don't know. And you think that's the clue? You think that's what he wants? He wants you to realize they're both, they're, they're making connections that seem fantastical. And they're not making connections that seem quite obvious. And then the and final, then, and then the final murder also leads to like a live Twitch stream of this murder. My so it's like part of that Twitch stream. Wow, Paul, but, is d- there's Paul. so many comments of people just saying this is fake. <laughs> <laughs> they were getting good numbers too. I mean no, look it definitely inspired me to do some fun stuff like that on my Twitch channel but now uh, I am very interested I mean that was the other thing it's like it builds to a climax that's so out of character right nothing has been televised nothing has been orchestrated and all of a sudden Britney Snow's on camera and he's like I'm gonna do it why? What? <laughs> why? 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 Why now? Why? Why here? Why Just the? Because there's why the technology? Here? I don't know. I don't know. Listen, if I swear to God, if Bosch had shown up at the first murder scene, nobody else would have been murdered. Bosch would have figured this out immediately with good police work, solid uh, clue gathering and 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 tracking it down. These guys are out of their minds. Yeah, they're they, really, they are the fact that they don't try to solve it. It's like the movie is called Hangman. And again, as someone who won at Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, oh boy. $160,000, like you're you're asking us as an, as an audience to play the game with you. And for those of us who are very good at playing that game, it's very hard to not be able to compete. I was frantically writing down the letters that I could see yes. passing by to try to... I kept, I kept freeze framing every time we got a new yeah. letter and it was plugged in. I kept freeze framing <laughs> to be like, okay, I guess let me see Here if I can go. figure this out. Let me see if I can get ahead of it because they're going to, they must be digging in on it now. They've got three or four letters. Nope. No interest. No, the only no thing that they came it. up with was the most insane thing, which is like, pull the records of everyone released in the last nine months. Yeah. That's a cra- that would be a crazy thing to do. But they don't. Here's what's crazy: they don't even seem, in, and not until Brittany Snow really mentions it and foregrounds it a lot. They don't seem to think it has anything to do with the two of them. Even though the movie began with their badge numbers being carved into desks, that's just it, man. With they're two bad little at dummies this. staring yeah. at a hangman. Puzzle. Yes. What was and that? Then- this feels like the snowman. It, yes. That's what it feels like. Remember, remember when we found out yes. that that movie, The Snowman, <laughs> one of the reasons that it felt so bad and disjointed is because they didn't shoot twenty percent of the script. They ran out of money and time, exactly and they were unable like. to shoot it all. That's what this felt like. They but weren't. They, they didn't have. They the had shots. the scenes, and this is maybe where the Al Pacino sleepwalking through it might come into play. They had the scenes that would set up a lot of connections. They 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 did it. They just didn't add I those will lines say, in. The cold open scene where he chases the van down and come and points his gun and says, get out of the van. It does appear that his eyes are closed the entire <laughs> he, time. He does look his, that's where he's he, the sleepiest. He appears to be full in a full REM sleep and in when, that moment. When well, he gets I, out I of that feel, car, he looks exhausted. I, he's I, like, who? I say, I say, you come out of that van. Who? And by the way, who's afraid of this man? Like, this is a short little guy who's like 80 years old. Like, I mean, God, I mean, God bless him. But it's like, and no they're one's like, there like, might be a bomb in there. Why they think there's a bomb in there? Who knows? But he's like, Ugh. fuck a bomb. And we never find out what's crazy. Al Pacino's 83. He's 80 we years old running around. We never find out 
what that guy, why that guy sideswiped him, why he was driving so crazy, why he was in the van, what was in the van, what he went. We never find out anything about that guy. So why put the scene at the top of the movie? Medallion. Just so that later we can, just for the medallion. June, it's just for the medallion. I, and look, it's, it makes no sense. And I got to just say one thing that we haven't talked about, but you know me, I love slaughterhouses. I think it's a beautiful place where, you know, we really are creating, uh, we're, we're Your ending life. Your first date was to a slaughterhouse, in right? June Wasn't and then, it, you and, guys? Yeah, you know, and I always like to bring there because I'm like, it's the end of life, it's the beginning of life because we're creating nourishment. Here's the thing. That slaughterhouse <laughs> was treated as if like five o'clock the bell rang and they just left all the meat out on the <laughs> counters. Like there is meat every like meat is not put away in the middle of the night. It's the middle of the night. And <laughs> do you know how many rats there would be swarming oh, I can't even ever in every I place? I mean that meat there was not just, and, and they don't turn on a light. Clearly, there's a lot of lights at the slaughterhouse. Uh, clearly. There's no guards. There's no security people. There's nobody letting them in. They walk in the back door of a slaughterhouse. There's meat, just meat remnants all over all the tables. All the tables. So it's like you're walking through a like a haunted house. That's how like, yeah. And yeah. one of them should be like, oh, we got to call the health department to have this place shut down because this looks absolutely not up to code. And these <laughs> motherfuckers, these guys are so unfazed. That woman slices her wrists and the captain's like, "You, what did you do bringing a Coke can in there? He's like, all right, look, yeah. you screwed up. Well, yeah, so we just tried, <laughs> like, she's like you should be a little dead. bit more. She's almost Yeah, he's dead. like, all right, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Well, yeah, you got to crucify again, me about this. Once again, it's Brittany Snow who's like, detectives, detectives. She's the only person who has any semblance of situational awareness in the world. Yes, and they are so she's the, out of it. They are oblivious. They don't even when there are things that are right in front of their face, they do not connect them at all. And she does every step of Although the way. She's I a genius. Couldn't, I, I was confused by her though, because I was like, is she they do something sometimes with women, especially blonde women in movies, where they're like, Okay, let's put a bun on her. Let's put a low bun on her. We gotta believe she's smart. Put a bun on her. And that low bun put was starting bun to her. drive me. <laughs> put a bun on her. Get her in a bun. Put her, and get her out put there. A bun put her in a bun. <laughs> put, put her in a bra. Put, a, put a, <laughs> a bun on her. A bun and a bra. <laughs> and it's driving me nuts. But there were times where the two of Pacino and Urban would be talking and they'd cut to Britney Snow and she'd be in tears listening and emotionally connecting to them and what they were saying on a level that felt so outsized. I'm like, what's her relationship? Paul, you said this at one point, like, are we going to find out she's Pacino's child? Yeah. Are we gonna, why is she is so she connected the, is, to them? Yes. Why are they? Yes. Why are any of them connected to each other such that they feel so like you would, you would think that she and Carl Urban might start having a, romance in a movie like this like maybe they start to care for each not other in that, not with is, that low bun nope, not that's zero, why they kept zero. Her in a bun. no they no that's the thing is there isn't chemistry between any performers period like there isn't i don't believe that carl urban and al pacino have known each other for so long is that they're trying to impress upon us that they're old dear friends that they doesn't seem like it you know um, I don't get their interior relationships that would warrant the emotional investment that you're describing. It doesn't make sense because her, so her backstory is that when she was covering the cartel, someone jumped her and the cop who saved her life was killed. Her, not saved her life, not Okay. Saved her life, I don't think. But the cop who tried to find the person who did that and scarred her, um, he did get killed in the line of duty. So I'm like, oh, okay. But what I had trouble with is for somebody who's a New York Times investigative journalist, I'm like, you, she keeps on saying this isn't about me. And I'm like, honey, it you are making this about you. You have revealed that you are not, impartial that you are very much so looking for a story where you can kind of heal this trauma and make a cop memorialize a cop in some way and it's very strange well, is okay so that's a larger question that i have is she <laughs> on assignment in monroe georgia 
doing a character profile of Carl Urban, ex-FBI agent who now works for Monroe County PD for the New York Times? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why go to Monroe? What? <laughs> what story is this? We needed to bring something back. Like, There's so many things that are left hanging in this and not just the tulips that he pulled from the garden, which, by the way, all the men out there, if you're going to go into your own garden and get flowers to bring to your wife, like, that's the worst plan of all time, like, to go into your own, like... Like again, it shows no I, that's thought. why I, that's why I found it very strange, and I think we might learn something in the se- in the the sequel because I don't believe he cared about that wife. The only way to make this movie better would be for the sequel to be all of the same events told from the point of view of the serial killer, so that I can make sense of the movie I just watched, so that it's right. just giving me the information because n- I, I don't have any of it. Like or. Give me a Britney Snow movie because she's the only person that I'm interested in continuing on and solving cases well, because she is, did all the work for this one. This is what we're talking about. This movie doesn't have a main character. This movie has no, like, literally every character is about one quarter developed and we still have one quarter that is not full by anybody. Well, that's, yes. All three of them together are one character. Right. She she has emotions uh, Carl Urban is turned off, you know, she, like, and this the, is the, why, this is why I feel like this is the movie where it's like a checklist. Like, okay, we need one star that has foreign appeal. Well, Brittany Snow, she's in pitch perfect. We need one legend. Okay. Al Pacino. We got it. We need one person who's a good in, uh, up and comer. Okay. Carl Urban right around that. Like that, like, yeah. it's like, put them together. We need to, we need to be cop and they all have to be good guys. Like, it's like, it feels like they were thrust. Like they were all, thrust. and we need a, we need a hook. Yeah. Uh, what about hangman? The game hangman. Done. What? Everyone's talking about Barbie right now. No one talking about Hangman. This is the first kind of you know kids toy yeah. uh, movie trailer. The, hang, the Hangman averse. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like, uh, uh, but that's the thing is like that the Hangman doesn't make sense. The reporter angle doesn't make sense. The police procedural doesn't make sense. It's a failure at every single level because the minute you start to pull any of it apart, yeah. it falls apart and, completely. And the other trouble, and I know you brought this up already, Paul, but. It is really troubling to me that Al Pacino forces Carl Urban to look at those photos of his wife because there's I could see another I could see a scene in which he's just like, hey, so I just want to let you know that um, we actually realized that uh, your your wife, Jessica, had a, a V carved into her. What what yeah. we saw was actually a V. Yeah. And he and could then, say, let me see yeah. it. Let me see it. Like, and he could like, you ask know what? for it. Actually, no, and he could be like, "Don't, don't, don't. there's don't no need." We saw it, and then, if but he, meanwhile, he keeps it in the he keeps it in the top part of his desk as if he's looking at a picture of his kids. Like, I mean, that he's looking at that a lot. Wouldn't you, if you're Carl Urban, be looking for any way possible to connect the cold case of your wife's murder to any current um, ongoing investigation? Wouldn't that give you hope? He literally he seems yes. to not want to. He seems to not want to investigate. Well, maybe it. he doesn't want to close the case because he wants to keep yeah. his wife alive. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I wish I understood this fucking movie. Wow, because <laughs> I really, I like you. I love Carl Urban. Um, I think his he's the so good. Judge Dread, the Dread movie that he's in is fantastic. The boys. Um, the boys, he's just exceptional in. Um, I love him. Oh, I love um, him so much. Can Listen, we just talk about there's... one moment, though, too, that no one reacts to? Carl Urban loses his shit and is about to run over the killer, right? Who speeds away on a oh, dirt yeah. bike. And everyone's like, stop, stop, stop. And they get hit by a Mack truck. And no one's like, hey, man, you've lost it. It's like shit just went on. The next... Same thing. Next day. Yeah. Like, no one reacts like, they, like, they, they would literally also, say to Brittany Murphy, you need to take a break. Yeah. <laughs> you need to sit out. All would also be <laughs> hospitalized for a week after that accident, at least. Pacino, if they were hit by a Mack truck in that car, the way they were hit, Pacino would turn you're, to dust. You're so right. Because he would we've explode. Already, we've already seen that when Pacino is, like, basically, like, tapped by that hanging pig man he falls on the ground and can't get up his back uh, like so they much. should after they after they're pulling britney murphy not britney so britney snow you got me got it in my head Paul. <laughs> after they're pulling britney snow out of the car they should look over and out al- where al pacino was sitting should be a small pile of dust <laughs> 
and like and a, and a hairpiece, like because it makes no sense that he walks out like, oh hey, that was a crazy one. Who ah, uh, y'all want to get some po boys? Oh, it's just thirty three uh, minutes to Atlanta. Uh, the deep. I got deep a car dad in my pickup truck. Who ah, uh, gators? I, I'm just this, it, like, and I do think that. This is a movie that you fall asleep to and you think is better than it is. Like, if you catch it midway through, you think it's better than it is because you clearly like, oh, I missed something that sets up and all this makes sense. Yeah, you're like, totally But when you sit right. and watch it, when it's you watch entirety. the whole thing, you see all the holes. But that's like, I, I would love called... to watch if there are deleted scenes from this movie. I would love to see what they chose to take out. You oh, know, fascinating. Like, uh, so I, if if anything, I also believe they had to put everything they shot in the movie. They're like, we, listen, we we got to put it in. This is a blooper, but we're putting it in. I was obsessed with the fact that Brittany Snow in the beginning of the movie, when they realize when they're at that school and see two dummies, two little doll dummies <laughs> staring up at the hangman board, and clearly, like we come to realize, like, oh, that's this is the serial killer telling Urban and, and Pacino that they're dummies and they're dummies for trying to play this game. But when she says I'm good with numbers because she's remembered his, first of all, like just remembering a number doesn't mean you're good with numbers necessarily, but also, you're also a, a reporter. Kelly, you're, you're a reporter. reporter. Yeah. And I, what you I was, should know this stuff. What I, yes. But also what I was counting on is, Oh, you're good with like puzzles and games and like, we're right. Like you'd be, be good on survivor. The puzzle portion Wait, of survivor. What? Yeah, the puzzle portion of Survivor. Okay, yeah, there are they do compete with. What I, I will back up what you're saying, June, and say, okay, let's say Brittany Snow is good with numbers and has a good memory, right? Because she's a reporter let's or whatever. See it again. And then Pacino is not only good with puzzles; he does the crossword puzzle every day. He's good with crossword puzzles in Latin, right? Which again, the clue is Latin. And it is a crossword puzzle esque style, but Pacino, his character, not interested in solving they the puzzle. They never look at those. Not letters. interested they in solving the puzzle. They never say like, "Oh, okay, do we have all the vowels yet?" They're never looking at that word. They're never, nope. you know, they tell one of their their assistants in the police station to like narrow the filter, narrow the search to who's just been released. It's also like, well, narrow the search with those letters. That just we've... have one person working on it and say, don't set it on that medical examiner all the time who, yeah, they've been hung. Like, what else do you need to know? <laughs> like, at this point, we don't Bring need to keep on going breakers. back. Yeah. Why, like, why, why was he frozen? Else. Why was he frozen? Who cares? At this point, the, the ins and outs of the Doesn't murders matter. are not important because let's we're chasing look, someone who has an MO. Let's to 11 p.m., okay? Yeah. And try yeah. to solve this freaking puzzle. By Why then, couldn't they let, call let, the train? it took decades to crack the Zodiac Killer's cipher. People worked hard to try and crack the cipher that the Zodiac Killer wrote. In that you don't have to tell Zodiac. June twice. Yeah, they're not she was there. interested <laughs> in solving the hangman. Her husband puzzle. solved the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I knew all of that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I again it's it a small them, town it, most of the cops are watching takes. Uh, most... it took them 60 <laughs> takes to decipher the Zodiac Killer's <laughs> cipher oh my god uh, I will say that um, <laughs> this is I, I, I think almost if you watch the first 45 minutes you'll leave happier because the first 45 minutes yeah. it's fun it's crazy but when you are forced to look at the end and you yourself feel like you want to go murder someone and make a hangman puzzle because my big question is also this it ends on this bullshit cliffhanger of like there's another hangman which i'm going to go to your theory june that there are twins but who was the first letter killed carl urban's wife oh what do you mean no the second puzzle the second is there hangman. a letter filled in yeah. I don't, one I letter notice. filled oh. in oh so we just haven't found the victim oh. yet well i guess there's been I... somebody killed already yeah the only way this movie could redeem itself would be if in the second movie it's revealed that Brittany Snow is the murderer or one oh. or one of our or Carl Urban or I guess Pacino. But there's no way um, just because if if nobody that we're inside, if nobody on the inside of this movie is part of the crime, it's deeply unsatisfying. It's so terrible. You know? And it's also like. 
this whole idea also that the murderer needs to strike by 11 p.m. I'm like, why? To celebrate because his that's when his dad. Death. Yeah, that's when his dad died, and that's when he evicted him. I guess at 11 p.m. <laughs> That's when the eviction man came. That's a stretch, you guys. So, can I, eviction man. May I ask one other question, <laughs> which I guess this maybe unravel everything. Why was it in Latin? <laughs> great, great question. Why was it in Latin? <laughs> why was it makes it no now? sense. Like, and why do you... Okay, so now let's reverse engineer it. So they clearly thought, oh, it, let's make it in Latin so it's harder to solve the puzzle. As we're going, but meanwhile, so be in Latin. But 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 well, what if we? But how are we going to solve it? Okay, we're going to have to have a scene where it's established that Pacino speaks can solve puzzles in Latin, so he's very familiar with Latin. So we'll just put it in early. But okay, but here's the thing too: it's in Latin. Let me tell you how it's spelled: E V I C T I O N E M. The word is there. It's not like one of those Latin words where it's like, oh, that means to evict. It's there. Evictionem. It's there. It's not like, it's not like yeah. I figured it out. The, even the Latin word, you know, maybe the Latin word for abandon. If you flip the last two letters, it's evict me. Oh. oh. Here's my question, though, which is when that, that hangman's written on the wall with the eyes already in, so the word's complete, right? Mm -hmm. So did the killer do that on his fall down? How did those eyes get up there when well, exactly. I think he knew I think he knew I think he knew it was he was going to be successful in killing Britney Snow. So he does it, but he figures out the puzzle before. Like he doesn't kill and then do the puzzle because he did that at the train station too. He may come around three o'clock in the afternoon, do the puzzle part. Then go back to the train yard and then hang up the guy. Like he's got to, like you know, it's it's a it's a complicated. Thing. It's like a scavenger process. hunt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. And he's I, got I mean, he's doing so much work, but like I never even we're never even along for the ride with him. You no. know, like in Silence of the Lambs, when you see Buffalo Bill talking the girl into helping load the sofa into the van, blah blah blah. You're with Buffalo Bill while he's out and doing his scary ass stuff. You're like, okay, I understand the world of the bad guy. In a way that I don't understand the world of this bad guy, even when it's uh, uh, when it's revealed to me by the end. I, I don't. And his reasoning, forgive me, bad Mr. Bad Guy, Mr. Hangman, but his reasoning is is nonsense. He's he thinks Al Pacino's responsible for his it's father's just so hanging. It's unsatisfying. Well, the, the dad the dad was okay. So no, it's not that because the landlord went to court to evict the tenant. The f then the eviction notice was probably put on the door and then the father's like, well, I'm going to kill myself and then knock, knock, knock. <laughs> and then Al Pacino's arrives. It's like, there's multiple steps. It wasn't like Al Pacino's like, Hey, I got to evict you. And the dad was like, uh, one second, I got to take a quick shower and then killed himself. It like, the, it seemed like the kid was maybe home alone with this man hanging as Al Pacino's working the night shift, uh, oh, so doing terrible. nighttime it was evictions. Really upsetting. Although, what Why are we I doing nighttime we evictions? Gonna, I thought we were going to find out that the young boy had actually hung his father. Ooh, great! By the way, give me that. Give me anything that that helps set up for me. What the fuck is going <laughs> on? <laughs> yeah. Like at the almost like at the end of the movie, the, in the, at the end of Burn After Reading, there's that great scene with J.K. Simmons and David Rashi where they're trying to explain the events of the movie, and and they're just like, I, honestly, I don't know. It makes no sense. This happened, and then this happened. He's like, really? That's crazy. Yeah, no, I know. It doesn't make any sense. Like they break it down on a level that is like the events of this movie were preposterous. So I don't know what to tell you. Like the movie should have had one of those because none of it added up and they should have just been like, this was a weird one, right? Yep. This one was, uh, you know, look, it like or or they have the hangman just go, I had a plan, but I had to work fast because when you came out of retirement, I just had to kill will people willy nilly. Like, like just make somebody say something that makes when uh, when she started following you around. I knew that she was the smartest one, so I had to make my tracks even harder to cover. Like, what? and basically, the, the whole anything. thing comes down to like Pacino having to like apologize to the serial killer and be like, "I failed you because when I was like a beat cop, I didn't like adopt you. <laughs> like, 
I don't, I don't understand. Because I followed like, the letter of the, the law? This, this serial killer, I'll be honest with you, is like his emotional, like he's attached too much emotional weight onto Pacino. It's inappropriate. It's absolutely inappropriate. And he's saying to Pacino, all of my personal trauma is because of you. Wait, Not Pacino true, didn't my work. guy. Misplaced. Pacino didn't even work in that place where he was abused that we think he was abused. I don't even know. He's like, let me take your place. He wants to take the place. Yeah. Why? Why does he have the guilt? Like, again, make him the dad. Make him like the, like he was having a relationship with that kid's mother and he abandoned. Something, anything. Make it then. Make it personal is what this movie is lacking because there's a lot of personal stuff. Carl Urban's wife is killed. The, 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 you know, all these, there are relationships, but they're all circumstantial. Hmm. The, the direct, um, uh, uh, the criminal, the serial killer, and Pacino. There is nothing really personal between. No, them. this and movie is a lot of a people bummer. meeting each other for the first time. Yes, <laughs> for the coincidence. Very first time. Yeah, and that's what I can't. That's what's so tremendously unsatisfying about it, and why I would not recommend people watch it. Oh my gosh, this is, I mean, this is a lot. It's a lot that we went through here. I feel like we had an emotional reaction to it. I was coming in, enjoying it. Now I'm really frustrated. It makes me want to just kill somebody and, and, and send them run around town to solve a hangman Stop puzzle. Stop that, Paul. I, <laughs> I, did, I actually did enjoy watching this If you did, did June movie. and I would be on the case. We would be on the case. I really did enjoy watching this movie, actually. And it is so deeply unsatisfying. And there's no there there. And it's, again, not a, n- it's not a- anything that I saw or anything that happened. But I did still have some really good laughs. So, um, oh, yeah, I just did. You know, and as far as our movies go, I thought this went down pretty easy. Oh, yeah. It's an hour and a half. Nice it's time. fine. Nice time. And, nice and especially if you're not expecting. I think... I think because of the people involved and the type of movie it was, I thought it was going to be a little bit better. Sure. Like uh, in terms of story, like like I, if this had had even a more slightly cohesive storyline, it would have been a blast, sure. I think. I, but it, it wasn't enough just because I was doing so much work on the movie's behalf that I was like, why am I working so hard if the movie's not going to work this I, I, I went you know? away feeling stupid about myself. Like, maybe I missed something. But clearly, we might have all missed something because there are people out there that love this movie. It is now time for Second Opinions. The movie was a piece of shit Yet this person recommends it Tell me what is the message I need a second opinion. All right. Here are some reviews from Amazon. The average rating of this movie is four out of five stars. Wow. 57% are five star reviews. MD Windhorst writes Looking at some of the reviews by, quote, expert reviewers, I just call mine just an opinion. It's a cop movie, people. You are probably the same critics that think you know everything about the hops and your freaking local craft beer. Whoa. If you enjoy watching a legend school younger actors that hope to one day achieve half of what Pacino has and help them hone their craft, then you should watch it. Was anyone great in this film? Was the plot weak? (laughs) It's a freaking cop movie, people. Pacino (laughs) should have stopped and could have stopped long ago, but he loves his craft. Can he call it in and still be better than most of today's herd? Yes. For a cop, quote, movie, it was extraordinarily well acted. Was it interesting enough? Yes. Was it worth an hour and a (laughs) half of my time? Yes. Did it shove down my throat some social warrior message? No. There aren't many movies left that are purely entertainment and escape. And this did the trick for me. That's just my opinion. Five stars. Oh, God. Wow. Oh, and God. <laughs> and then wow. um, this one was, uh, I, I like this one. The title was Al Pacino is great. Paul Urban is a good actor as well. Five stars. Paul Urban. 
Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> and then... I mean, I don't even think you can level the claim that this is copaganda simply no. because they're so bad at police <laughs> work. Not. I mean, my gosh. By the way, I would say... the. Oh, my God. Anyway, Deborah Gale writes this. I don't understand the three-star average. I do probably watch too many serial killer documentaries, series, and movies, and I have no idea why I'm so interested in it, but I am. This is now one of my top ten on my list for the best movies about serial killers. It was exciting. It got my pulse racing, and I was nearly white-knuckling it. The body count was high, and the pace was fast, and all the actors did a great job, even though most of the movie was filmed at a night setting, and I never once thought about it because you could clearly see what was happening at all times. If this is the kind of subject matter that interests you, you will be really glad to spend an hour and 33 minutes to watch this film. It's like the movie Seven. I'll also be watching that movie again, too. Five stars. <laughs> I mean, this is not anything like Seven. This movie wishes it was this Seven. This is Seven through, uh, uh, like... I feel like they want, they like the pig head scene was what made me feel like, oh, these guys think they're doing Seven. Oh, my gosh. If, boy, oh, boy. So... I mean, I know we've talked about what we recommended. I think we're kind of mixed on it. We kind of, I mean, there's I mean, enough in here that's yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, I think watch it. I think yeah, watch, watch it. I mean, yeah. Watch it fine. But, you know, don't, it's, it, boy, boy, what a mess. I will say there's one connection to How Did This Get Made Past, which is uh, the director of this movie, Johnny Martin, was the stunt coordinator for Old Dogs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> just drawn connections. That's all. And, I love it. Uh, and in the, uh, in the beginning of the episode, I said I got caught up in saying this is Al Pacino's lowest rated uh, vehicle under 40 percent. I thought I misread something. But during the podcast, I did do the research. No, no. This is Al Pacino's late. Uh, this is Al Pacino's lowest rated starring vehicle with 4 percent. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. When I saw the four, I was like, oh, a zero wasn't added. 40% is what I assumed. But no, it is, it is now verified. Four, four percent, four percent. So this is a low, this is a low one. It's rare to see the Rotten Tomato scores in the in the single digit. <laughs> the uh, guy, the guy who is revealed to be the serial killer at the end is simply not smart enough or capable of pulling off all of the kills no. in the movie. No way, no how. He's simply not, He's. I don't believe for an instant that this moron has been three steps ahead of these two police officers and this New York Times investigative journalist. Well, I think we're going to find who, in the sequel who, who, that he has not been. Yeah, Oof. yeah, I guess you're right, because it it was so dumb. I think we he should, was so yeah. Go ahead. I think we should be giving up hope that there's going to be a sequel on this one. What? <laughs> How do we get? Uh, can we what? help this? I, I mean, because of the, the strike. strike? Yeah. You think because of the strike? <laughs> <laughs> I think. You think they were in the middle of writing it and it was pencils down? <laughs> I mean, maybe they were trying to really. They were. They, you know what? They were trying to find the right Latin word, and it's taking them too long, and they've just given up. <laughs> what would be oh the best God. Latin word with a V? We've already backed ourselves into the V. Uh, what if it was just eviction him again? <laughs> Uh. Um, all right. Before we end today's show, I just want to give a shout out to Francis Rizzo, uh, who has sent so many amazing themes to us over the years. And um, Francis is unfortunately in end stage kidney failure, and he is doing everything he can to try to find a match for a kidney transplant. Um, so the more potential donors he can reach, the greater chance he has. And if there are any potential donors out there right now, uh, you can go to kidneyregistry.org or call 516-562-0550 or email transplantsurgery at northwell.edu and mention the name Francis Rizzo. Yeah. Best of luck, Francis. Yes. Good luck, Francis. And thank you for all your songs. All right. So... That brings us to the end of our episode. Make sure you always head on over to Tee Public. I'm sure that we will have some sort of eviction man merch. Uh, I, I feel like we're we're going to need a shirt 
And a shout out to our producer, April Halley, for finding these movies. This is a, a true gem. And our uh, producers in-house, uh, Scott Sonny and Molly Reynolds. Uh, of course, all of our amazing art is designed by the fantastic Kyle Waldron. And today's episode was engineered by Rich Garcia. And uh, make sure you listen to next week where you can chime in about all the things that we might have missed or maybe... Uh, theories that you might have about this movie, you can give us a call at 619-PAUL-ASK and we will talk all about whatever you want to talk about. You can leave questions for me and Jason and we can also get into more theories of The Hangman. All right, see you next time, everybody. Bye for now.